Hey guys, another update here on my LED panel driver uh, in Touch Designer. Uh, I've been adding some features and customizing things in Touch Designer so that I could map the actual LED panel uh, to a portion of a video stream so that way uh, in the future I could have multiple LED boards uh, you know in various configurations <coughs> and I could not you know I could map them to the part of the video I wanted without dealing with code too much keep it more visual so uh, this is a quick demonstration of that. Um, so on this little control panel over here, we've got a few different controls. Uh, I have a brightness here. Uh, as you can see, I can turn it all the way off, or I can turn it all the way up. Um, for the camera's sake, I'm going to keep it here for now. Um, now. These two sliders here are the actual placements. As you can see, we're moving this around on the uh, on the video space. I guess you can, it's kind of like uh, moving around UVs in 3D if you've ever done anything with that. Uh, very similar concept. Uh, this one's a scale. So say I have a panel that's um, very wide, not very tall. Uh, I could basically stretch to accommodate uh, that distortion that you might get from the square pixels. Uh, and then over here, we've got our vertical scale. And then last but not least, we have our rotate, which allows us to do the very same thing. Say we have a panel at 45 degrees, uh, but for some reason we want to map it um, at this angle on the video, we can. Um, so uh, inside here we've got a checkbox for uh, enabling or disabling the actual stream. We can fix this angle of this real quick. Uh, yeah, so if you toggle this, you'll see it disappears. Uh, this is a preview of what's being sent to the LEDs. Uh, as you can see, it's much more high resolution, but uh, when I toggle it here, it also stops sending data to the board for that um, for that LED template, I guess you could call it. Uh, here we have our resolution, so if we know, we have to know what our board's gonna be. If it's gonna be, in this case, an eight by eight, uh, we type that in here. If it's gonna be uh, several strips built into a homegrown array, and they're, I don't know, 16 by four, we have to put that in here too. <coughs> And this information not only uh, goes into resizing the video stream uh, to the correct amount of pixels, but it also goes into cropping and some other things like that um, that are happening procedurally in the background. Um, start size, this one doesn't matter so much. 0.5 and 0.5 is a good starting range. Uh, but you know, you can, you can change the original or the starting size of your plane if you want to. Um, aspect multiplier is pretty much just a multiplier to make things bigger or smaller. Uh, up here, we've got a toggle serial out. Uh, you can't see this in the video, let me adjust this real quick. There we go. Um, as you can see, the video display stopped. Uh, if I toggle this back on, uh, our stream starts back up. Uh, below that, if you can read it, uh, flip axis. Basically, just a um, quick orientation flip. I need to set up another button for flipping in the other direction because that is a problem depending on what LED board you're using. Uh, zigzag. Uh, is a checkbox that allows you to reverse every other row of data before it gets sent to the Arduino. Uh, useful if your LED panel zigzags, if, if its flow zigzags rather. Uh, this board in particular from Adafruit, it goes from left to right, left to right, left to right, so I didn't have to worry about that. I built it in here anyways because I knew I was going to need it eventually. Uh, okay, so last slider, uh, got this guy here, it's just a, something to help preview the tile against the background, and I can fade it if I don't want to have too much of that going on. I'm going to hit escape here and go back into the node network. Let me back out real quick. Alright, so uh, here there's this little quick procedural animation going on, and we have um, uh, an image, well, right now it's turned out to an MOV file. Uh, this is just a little abstract animation. It's being comped together and piped into um, this guy here. This is the main comp. Uh, and the way I have this set up right now, you may not be able to read this, it says LED stream mapper underscore pin two. Um, right now I'm thinking that once uh, I build a big enough display that uses more than one pin on the Arduino, I'm gonna need to modularize this um, mapping setup you know, by the pin because each pin is gonna have its own stream of LEDs to write to. Um, so yeah. I won't get too far into that right now because it's kind of hard to explain, um, you know, over a video. Up here we have uh, some camera transform settings I have 
defined in a constant. Uh, basically, I'm doing that so that every camera that's in this network gets the same settings. I don't have to go through and change each one separately. Um, here is just a input from the video. This is actually what's going to get mapped onto the LEDs, as well as um, the reference animation and the texture, and it's used in a few different places. Uh, so without digging in, in, deep, deeper into the LEDs um, template here, uh, just a brief overview of what this does. Uh, this is the preview. Um, that's ba basically getting the, um, the panel after it's been transformed um, to the right place. Just the preview. <clears throat> uh, here we have our 3D. We have several um, transform channels that are being used later on. Uh, here we have the crop. The crop is basically taking, uh, it's procedurally cropping based on the data it's getting from here, which uh, it, it's using the, the placement and the transform of um, the panel in conjunction with uh, the resolution, which right now is 1280 by 720. Uh, and it's using those two uh, with some expressions to figure out where it needs to crop to get right to the edge. So if I scale my panel uh, and widthwise, this is, this is actively cropping at the right place. Um, <clears throat> in fact, I can show you real quick. Um, if you watch these values, they'll change as I, um, well, actually they should change. I guess they don't need to change. Okay, so the transforming is happening, happening uh, before this and it's getting transformed back. Um, that's right. <laughs> I was up till six in the morning, so I don't remember everything clearly. So yeah, um, that would change if I changed the resolution I was working at. Say my video stream coming in was um, very wide and not so tall, this would change. Uh, but it doesn't need to change all the time. It is resizing and then pixelating um, our image, preparing it for uh, the Arduino. <clears throat> uh, there's a few color corrections and um, a vertical flip that's happening here, nothing, nothing amazing. And here we get an interesting looking node. It's basically taking the video and it's converting it to a stream of channels. Um, since our video is 8 pixels wide, the sample range is 8 pixels wide. Uh, this has nothing to do with time anymore. It's just basically um, a holder for this information that uh, allows me to perform other mathematical operations on it that I couldn't while it was 8 image. Um, as you see, there's lots of different lines. Basically, every row of pixels uh, gets split up into three lines red, green, and blue. So um, eight wide and then eight times three tall. And that's your total number of um, data points, basically. Uh, here, this thing just controls the brightness via the slider I have built in for brightness, so nothing fancy happening there. And this node, um, or this container rather, uh, is the send to serial container. Basically, I go in here, uh, it's not too fancy. You have your input coming in through um, that same thing you saw, and it's being converted to a table of, of um, integers, integer values between zero and 255. Um, that's what the NeoPixels require, so uh, I'm mapping and rounding them up to integers there. Uh, here is just a null, and it's being passed directly into this script, which is Python script, in case you're wondering. Um, and uh, I won't, you know, bore you with too much of that, but basically it's using um, the serial operator's command send bytes, and it's allowing me to send um, basically this stream of bits in a one-dimensional array, I guess you could call it, uh, through the serial line, through USB, uh, to the TMZ here, uh, and it's receiving that, and it's kind of reassembling it. Uh, based on the order it receives the, the bytes, so uh, I don't have to specify which, um, <laughs> I guess you could say, set of values goes with which LED. Uh, because they're arriving in the same order each time, I can say, okay, this first three bytes is going to go to LED 0, the first or the next three bytes are going to go to LED 1, the next three to 2, and so on and so forth. And when it reaches the limit, which the Arduino knows the limit is uh, the number of LEDs times 3. So 64 times 3, once it reaches that many bytes, it starts over. Um, and once it's started over, Touch Designer has also started over. It also knows to um, stop once it reaches the end of the table and start over. So a lot of nitty-gritty things. Um, I kind of wanted to put together a homegrown solution, 
uh, that you know I could learn from and practice with, uh, because such designer is still relatively new to me. Um, 